One phrase that often gets thrown around by coaches as one of the worst things that you can do on a tennis court, which is to have T-Rex arms. And what coaches mean by T-Rex arms is to have a bent arm, to hit the forehand, for example, like this, or a backhand like this. And I'm here to tell you that there's absolutely nothing wrong with hitting various shots with T-Rex arms. And how do I know this to be true? Because I did a tremendous amount of research studying the greatest players in the history of the game of tennis. And I'm gonna go through various strokes and explain to you why it's perfectly okay to play certain shots with a bent arm, in other words, a T-Rex arm. And let's start off with the volley. In actuality, if you extend your arm on the volley, you're gonna have several disadvantages. You wanna have the elbow as close to your body as possible. Now, you don't want the elbow to be behind your body. This is not a good thing because your contact is gonna be further back. But the closer the elbow is to your torso, the more strength you're gonna have and actually the more feel you're gonna have. The more extended your arm is on the volley, the less feel and the less stability or strength you're gonna possess on the volley. So it is to your advantage to have the arm bent. Now, there's gonna be emergency situations on the volley where you will have to stretch out, and this is perfectly fine, but when you are not in an emergency situation, you should actually try to have the arm more bent on the forehand volley, on the backhand volley as well, while here it is probably gonna be a little bit more natural to keep the arm straighter, but not a completely straight position like this, but as more of a slight bend, while on the forehand it can be a little bit more of a severe bend, while keeping in mind that the elbow at all times has to be in front of the body. I made a video a long time ago, three years ago, where I used a stick that I put underneath my elbows and this stick helps players keep the elbows away from the torso. But this is independent from the T-Rex arm. So you can have a correct position of the elbow while still having a bent arm, the right angle of the wrist. And when you do this, you are gonna have more stability. In other words, you're gonna be able to maintain the angle of the racket face throughout the volley stroke and most importantly, you're gonna have a lot more feel. Now the two shots where you don't wanna have a T-Rex arm is gonna be the overhead and the serve. Obviously on these shots, because of the trajectory of the ball where we are hitting the ball on a downward trajectory, your advantage is gonna be to hit the ball as high as possible. And obviously here you want the arm to be fully extended, so the overhead and the serve are gonna be two shots where you don't want to have a T-Rex arm and you wanna hit both of these shots with a full extension of the arm. Now let's go on to specialty shots such as drop shots, squash shots, little short angled topspin shots, maybe topspin lobs and all the other specialty shots that are utilized in tennis here, just like the volley, the closer the elbow is to the body, the more feel you're gonna have. And you're gonna see this on the professional tour that the vast majority of players, when they attempt a drop shot, the arm is bent. Why? Because players have a lot more feel when the hand is closer to the body. The further we extend the arm, the less feel we're gonna have. And the specialty shots are all about feel, so it makes a lot of sense to play those with a T-Rex arm. Now let's go on to the baseline and we're gonna leave the two most controversial shots, the forehand and the two-handed backhand for the end. So make sure you stay with this video. But the next shots I'm gonna discuss is the one-handed backhand and the one-handed backhand slice. And you are gonna have an advantage to be more extended on these two shots. The reason is that we are using the weak side when we're hitting the one-handed backhand. And when we are in a bent position, several disadvantages take place. Number one, we reduce our range of motion because we wanna be working with a longer lever. We have to utilize the natural ways of gaining momentum when we're striking the ball with the weak side of the arm. So it doesn't make any sense to hit the one-handed backhand with a bent arm. It's less range of motion, a shorter lever, less natural momentum. The same goes for the slice backhand, even though here, if you're hitting a feel slice or a touch slice, it might be okay. But if you wanna hit your slice with more penetration, more pace. Here you want to be as extended as you can. 
So when it comes to the one-handed backhand, whether you're hitting it with topspin, driving it, or slicing it, it is to your advantage to be as extended as possible. Now, some players will have a mini bent, even fetter at times. You used to have his arm slightly bent, and I don't have a problem with that at all. You should find your own comfort level, but by no means should you have a T-Rex arm on your one-handed backhand and only very seldomly on your one-handed backhand slice. Keep in mind that anytime you're striking the ball with one hand on this side of the body to keep the arm as extended as you can. Now while the two-handed backhand looks simple, it is one of the most complex shots in tennis because the structures of the arms will change throughout the stroke and you can have a player that hits the two-handed backhand with several different arm structures. I'm going to show you the most common arm structure on the professional tour and that is one where both arms are actually bent. The vast majority of players that have a elite level two-handed back and have both arms bent at the moment of contact. If you take a look at the WTA tour where you'll see phenomenal backhands. Most WTA players have better backhands than forehands. Just think of Serena Williams, uh, Venus Williams, Maria Sharapova, Victoria Azarenka, and the list goes on and on and on. These are some of the most spectacular two-handed backhands you'll ever see, even compared to the men. And all of these players have a bent, bent arm structure, meaning that their non-dominant arm is bent and their dominant arm is bent as well. Quick interruption, guys. We'll get right back to the video, but I want to show you something that's quite frankly genius. You see how the ball is going forward? but yet the tip of my racket is going up and then across this device called the Top Spin Pro. See, a lot of people have this faulty mental image that we must hit forward in order to get the ball to go to the other side. And this is completely false. The Top Spin Pro will teach you the correct swing path. And not only do I recommend this device for the recreational level, this is something that I use personally to improve my forehand and backhand top spin. So go to the description, click the link and get yourself a Topspin Pro. Now the player with one of the greatest two-handed backhands on tour right now is Alexander Zverev and he hits the vast majority of his two-handed backhands with a bent bent structure and in my opinion the greatest two-handed backhand in the history of the game Novak Djokovic will not always but often hit the backhand with both arms bent as well. So it makes absolutely no sense to categorize a T-Rex two-handed backhand with both arms are bent as wrong if elite level tennis players with some of the greatest two-handed backhands we've ever seen are using this combination on the backhand. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. When we're talking about the recreational level it gets a little bit more complex because the two-handed backhand is very difficult for recreational adult tennis players and there are some mistakes that recreational tennis players commit on a two-handed backhand and one of them is making contact too far behind. So if the elbows indeed are behind the body, if that left elbow and right handers is tucked in this way, this is not a good contact. So you do want to make a proper contact that's independent of your T-Rex arms. You want to have the elbows in front of your body. See on the two-handed backhand the contact is going to occur with our torso still positioned to the side. So if you imagine me hitting this way, my torso is still going to be positioned towards the side when I make contact. However, independent of my arm structure, whether I'm completely straight or bent with both sides, my elbows are going to be in front of my body. How much? It doesn't matter how much as long as they are in front. But you will see that WTA players, for example, will have the elbows a little bit closer than ATP players, for example, that have the elbows a little bit further away from the body. And this is just a stylistic technical element that's based on genetic predispositions. Now on the two and the back end, it's not wrong by any means to have both arms straight, like Marcos Bagdadis, or to have the non-dominant arm straight while the dominant arm is slightly bent. This is what Novak Djokovic does on the vast majority of his backhands. This is what Andrew Agassi used to do as well. This is not a wrong position by any means. So when it comes to your two-handed backhand, you have to develop the proper contact. That is absolutely crucial. You have to have the correct sequencing of the torso rotation so that your contact is correct. How your arms are going to be positioned, whether you're going to be in a T-Rex style or more of a straight style, leave that up to your genetic predispositions. That's going to be your own personal style and there is no right 
or wrong when it comes to the arm structures on the two-handed backhand. And you guys have been patiently waiting for the forehand and here it is. It is absolutely okay to have a T-Rex forehand. Yes, you heard correctly. You can have a T-Rex forehand and have an elite level forehand. Now think about this logically. The player that's dominating the WTA Tour, Iga Swiatek. I hope I said her last name correctly. Any of my Polish fans, feel free to correct me. But in any case, she hits her forehand with an extreme T-Rex position, meaning that the elbow is extremely close to her torso. Does this mean she has a bad forehand? Well, only someone with very limited mental capacity would make such a conclusion. She has one of the best forehands in the history of women's tennis. Now, it's not only Sviantek. You go through the list of some of the greatest WTA players of all time, players such as Serena Williams, Venus Williams, Maria Sharapova, Victoria Zarenka, Simona Halep, and the list goes on and on. You will see very similar traits where many of these players have the elbow very close to the body. And not only does this not hurt their game, but in my opinion, it helps them because it is genetically the style that suits them the most for whatever the reason may be. Nobody taught them to hit the forehand like this. Nobody said to Iga, hey Iga, I want you to hit the forehand with your elbow like this. Nobody teaches this. It's just something that happens naturally. You have to understand that. There's a natural position that's based on a player's genetic predispositions. So what would happen if you forced these players that I just mentioned to straighten their arm and have a non-T-Rex forehand, kind of like an Akaraz forehand with a straight arm, this could quite possibly ruin their forehand because this position at the moment of contact, first of all, is not achievable because this part of the forehand where contact takes place happens in milliseconds and players are actually not aware how their arm is positioned. So even if you wanted to teach someone this position, they wouldn't be able to achieve it. But let's say theoretically that these players could change their forehand contact and straighten the arm completely and have a full extension and get rid of their T-Rex position. This wouldn't do anything to their forehand. It actually might make it worse. Why? Because naturally, this is not a position of the arm that's suited to their body type and their genetics. Again, Nobody taught them to play like this. This is something that happened naturally on these players. Now let's go over to the ATP. I made a video more than three years ago. This is one of the first videos that I made on the Intuitive Tennis YouTube channel. And it was based on my research where I studied the amount of straight arm forehands in the top 100 on the ATP and the top 100 on the WTA Tour. And there was only one or two on the WTA Tour that had a straight arm forehand out of the top 100. And on the ATP, it was 15 percent and out of the 15 percent only six or seven had a true straight arm forehand a la Alcaraz or Nadal or Federer most of the other ones there had somewhat of a straight arm forehand like a Chilich or Del Potro where there was a slight bend in the arm so in any case it was only 15 percent of players that used a more extended style forehand even on the ATP tour and I ran the numbers in today's game and the numbers are still accurate. It's a little bit higher than it was four years ago. It's around 20%. But the vast majority of ATP players and almost all WTA players still use a bent arm forehand. In other words, a T-Rex forehand. Think about what I'm saying. The vast majority of elite level tennis players uses a bent arm forehand. You cannot make the statement that Novak Djokovic, Jack Sock, Nick Kyrgios, Felix Auger, Alias Sim, or Daniil Medvedev have bad forehands because they have a T-Rex forehand. All these players I just mentioned have a bent arm forehand. No, it's not like Sviantek where the elbow is close to the body. It's something that you really don't see on the ATP. Even players that have a bent arm forehand have a little bit more of a distance between the elbow and the torso. That's absolutely true, but it's still a T-Rex forehand. Here's the thing, guys. The forehand is one of the most complex shots in tennis, and it's absolutely true that a lot of players have problems around the contact. And yes, there are some problems with the elbow position, no doubt about it. You can have an elbow position that's incorrect. You can make contact with the elbow tucked in, and now you're taking the ball too far back. So don't confuse this video with thinking that you can hit the forehand with any type of elbow position, no. Like I said, not only is the dominant shoulder in front on a high-level forehand, something that I discuss 
in a lot of my forehand videos, but also the elbow has to be in front of the torso. You don't want to have it here or here. This is going to result in a contact that's too far behind. You want to have that elbow in front of you. But please understand that there's no such thing as a T-Rex forehand. There's absolutely nothing wrong with having a bent arm forehand. Simple logic will tell you that if some of the greatest forehands in the world, such as Djokovic, Kyrgios, Sak, and the list goes on and on, have a bent arm forehand, there's absolutely nothing wrong with such a forehand if it comes natural to a player. So understand this, if you are a player who has naturally more of an extended forehand and hits the ball a la Alcaraz, Nadal, or Federer, nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with a straight arm forehand if it comes natural to you. But at the same time, there's absolutely nothing wrong with a forehand that's bent if it comes natural to you. What you should never do is try to manufacture certain arm positions around the contact. This is going to turn into a disaster. Now, the reason why this is going to turn into a disaster is that you're going to be forced to slow down the area around the contact and you start manufacturing certain arm positions and your forehand is going to lose all its continuity, it's going to lose all its fluidity and you're going to be stuck with a hacked up forehand that has a lot of hitches in it. So forget the idea of a T-Rex forehand or a T-Rex two-handed backhand or a T-Rex volley. It is absolutely okay to have a bent arm on those shots.